The Lost Sanctuary structure deck was released back on June 14th, 2011. This structure deck brought the Agent archetype to the forefront of competitive play, and while we may have skipped over it previously, it definitely was one of the biggest threats of the format. Additionally, a new ban list was released on September 1st, 2011, and this list was monumental. Fishboard Blaster, Mind Master, Giant Trunade, and Royal Oppression were all now banned from competitive tournament play. Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, Debris Dragon, Formula Synchron, Legendary Six Samurai Shien, Lone Fire Blossom, TG Hyper Librarian, Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, Heavy Storm, Pot of Avarice, Primal Seed, and Shien Smoke Signal were all now limited to one copy each. Dulorin Tiger King of the Ice Barrier, Necro Gardener, Summoner Monk, Tragodia, Destiny Draw, Swords of Revealing Light, Call of the Haunted, and Mind Crush were all now semi-limited to two copies per deck. And finally, Judgment Dragon, Spirit Reaper, Megamorph, Mystical Space Typhoon, Overload Fusion, Gravity Bind, and Icarus Attack were all now unlimited to three copies. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Yeah! Well folks, we finally made it. Welcome to Tengu Plant Format. Now, when people think of Tengu Plant, they think of a very specific point in time, usually September of 2011. The reason for that is twofold. Firstly, there was a new ban list released in September. It was one of the largest ban lists in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, and while it banned a lot of really powerful cards that people were sick of seeing, things like Giant Trunade and Royal Oppression, it also unbanned some extremely strong power players, things like Heavy Storm and Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. Secondly, we finally got guidance as to what happens to monsters when they become Xyz material. See, prior to this tournament, if you did something like summon a Sangan off of a tour guide from the Underworld and then made, let's say, a Leviathan Dragon, you could detach the Sangan and trigger its from field to graveyard effect to add a monster from your deck to your hand. In fact, in the weeks preceding this tournament, individuals doing just that, then adding effect veiler for both the light and the dark necessary for very powerful chaos bosses like BLS, were absolutely dominating regionals nationwide. However, in the interim between the release of this new guidance on what happens to Xyz materials and this tournament, the meta was thrown into disarray. Widely expected to be very good were of course some Tengu variants, but mostly the new structure release Agents. Uh, the Agents, uh, alongside Master Hyperion, were some of the most powerful cards Yu-Gi-Oh has ever seen. Alex will talk to you a little bit more about that, but the deck that ended up taking the tournament was this one, Billy Brake's Tengu Plant List. As always, I recommend watching Joji Orlando's video on the specifics of this format, but one thing that he is very specific about is that people weren't expecting this deck to be as powerful at this tournament as it was. If you look at the ban list, it's not hard to see why. Almost every single part of the plant core that had formed the backbone of plant synchro for the past several formats had been limited. Debris Dragon, Dandelion, Glow Up Bulb, Spore, Lone Fire Blossom, all of these cards could only be played at a singular copy apiece. So people didn't fear it probably as much as they should. Joe actually tells a humorous anecdote where in like round one, he normal summons a Lone Fire Blossom and his opponent goes, plants? Well, plants indeed. It ended up winning the entire event. And the synergies within this deck are really, really something. I'll just walk you through the individual cards. We've got two copies of Max C, two copies of Effect Veiler. This is pretty much the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh that I get to start a profile with a list of hand traps and one Gore's the Emissary of Darkness. You are playing a plant core of five monsters that were pretty standard at the time. One copy of Debris Dragon, one copy of Dandelion, one copy of Gub, one copy of Spore, and one copy of Lone Fire. You could get into really weird scenarios in which too many of these ended up in your hand. You absolutely must be finding the Lone Fire. And of course, some other cards in this deck like Sangan really help to facilitate that. That. We've got three copies of Reborn Tengu. This one's a little frustrating. Obviously, Reborn Tengu is extremely powerful in this deck, but you really want to be making sixes with this monster 
not five. So that way you can use a Brio to dump these really powerful graveyard oriented plant monsters into your graveyard. And there's not a lot of really fantastic ways to do that. That said, Reborn Tengu still is a super huge power player in this build. Triple Tour Guide from the Underworld, one Sangan and one Spirit Reaper. Uh, these are your threes. Tour Guide from the Underworld and Sangan, of course, form a really powerful backbone of an Xyz strategy, but you could also just leave the Sangan on the field if you really needed the search. Um, oftentimes you would be using it, of course, to make either a Leviathan Dragon or a Levier. Levier, of course, did have applications. If you banish a monster, you can summon it back with Black Cluster Soldier, for instance, um, but mostly Leviathan was the play. Spear Reaper has some really niche interactions in this metagame that I think really warrant its inclusion. It's a very strange card to see this late in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, but it tends to come up. Of course, Thunder King Ryo is extremely powerful against a multitude of strategies. The amount of searchers and adds uh, in this format in particular is almost staggering. Agents, for instance, has dozens of ways to add specific cards from their deck to their hand. This is a great way to prevent that from happening. BLS is extremely strong and newly off the ban list. This card was a powerhouse in this format and made these long, slow control games, like in GOAT, have a definite clock. When he hit the field, then you had to start worrying. We're also playing a copy of Caius, a holdover from old plant synchro builds that played a lot of Monarchs. It's still very good as a corner case removal spell for stuff that kind of resists destruction like Stardust. We've got a Book of Moon, we've got a uh, Dark Hole, Double Enemy Controller. The name of the game for a lot of this deck is taking your opponent's monsters and using them as the material for the Synchro Summon. One copy of Foolish Burial, one Heavy Storm, one Mind Control for the same reasons, a Monster Reborn, Double Mystical Space Typhoon, a one for one, a newly limited Pot of Avarice, a Scapegoat. I love Scapegoat in this deck. It is so absolutely good at preventing you from dying when usually your hand is like full of monsters, baiting out MSTs and the like when you usually don't have a lot of really profitable hits from your opponent's uh, side of the field and just an all around strong card. We've got one copy of Call of the Haunted, one Solemn Judgment, two Solemn Warning. Um, some number of judgments and warnings would later be known as the Solemn Brigade, uh, as you couldn't really play three of either one, but because of the limit and semi-limit, you could play three total. We've got a Torrential Tribute and a Trap Dust Shoot. This was seeing renewed play because Mind Crush had gone to two, and these two cards are of course very powerful in tandem. In the side we've got uh, Double Cyber Dragon, uh, Double DD Crow, Double Leech the light, a very, very interesting piece of sideboard hate for light decks in particular. One Mystical Space Typhoon, this card was brought back to three. Double Bottomless Trapple, a Chain Disappearance, a Debunk. Debunk was really, really strong in this format as a mechanism to prevent you from losing to Maxi and Valor, as well as, of course, negating the activation and effects of cards that activate in the graveyard. Uh, Dust Tornado and Double Mind Crush. In the extra, we've got Ally of Justice, Cataster, Ancient Fairy Dragon, Armory Arm, Black Rose Dragon, Brianac, Formula Synchron, this is your ladder to a significant amount of really, really powerful synchro plays. Orient Dragon came up quite frequently. Scrap Dragon, Stardust Dragon, TG Hyper Librarian, Trishula, Leviere, Leviathan Dragon, Utopia, and Steel Swarm Roach was first playable during this period as well. So, a really heads up deck built on a core of powerful three ofs in Tengu and Tour Guide and niche one ofs otherwise. This is the deck, and I'm really happy to be piloting it. Well, folks, we finally did it. We're not only out of the shirt of shame, but we are now in one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most loved old legacy formats, being September 2011 Plant Format. Now, it's obviously named Plant Format, but there was actually a wide myriad of different decks that were playable during this time, and we are going to be piloting one of the other All-Stars agents. This was actually one of the decks that people were fearing was going to be the best deck of the format, but it's still one of the best at the time, and it's still a force to be reckoned with. So I can't wait to play it. This is gonna be a ton of fun. We're actually gonna be replicating the first and second place finals match from YCS Toronto 2011 during this time. And uh, we got second place, so hopefully we can actually take the W here. Let's go ahead and do the card by card. So first up, we have two copies of Archlord Christia. This card is just insane. If you've never seen it before, if you have exactly four fairies in your graveyard, you can special summon this card. And if summoned this way, target a fairy in your graveyard, add that target to your hand. 
but more importantly, neither player can special summon monsters. This is basically the OG Vanity's Emptiness, but it basically just going to lock everyone out from playing. You can see why this was pretty good to use against a plant-oriented deck. You can also just tribute summon this out if you have two monsters. You don't need to have the four fairies. That's not the only way to summon this. That is something to keep in mind as well. We also have a BLS. This card got unbanned for some reason during this format, but I guess that's exciting because, you know, who doesn't love BLS? It's such a classic, and it's just an absolute bomb of a card, and uh, hopefully we're going to be dropping it this episode. We've also got BLS's little brother, Chaos Sorcerer, which is still a pretty decent card. We've got plenty of lights and darks to work with in this deck. Triple Effect Veiler. What I love about this deck is that there are so many tuners that we have access to, and so we've got a lot of potential synchro plays coming up this time around. Two copies of Gen X Ally Birdman. Now, this card's really cool with a card like Agent of Creation Venus, because since Venus can summon three copies of Shine Ball, if we bounce one of them back to summon Birdman, since Birdman's a tuner, we actually just have access to a wide diversity of different levels. We can make a six, a seven, a five, an eight, a nine. Like, there's just so much we can do with this card, plus a Venus, that I really hope we get to put this card to work. We also have a copy of Gores for obvious reasons. Honest, because we are playing a light deck, so that way we want to just threaten Joseph at any time with battle. Three copies of Master Hyperion. This is obviously the namesake of the deck. And what's nice about this deck is that besides the tour guide, most of the cards in here actually came in the structure deck. So it's one of the really first instances of like buy three structure decks and you have like 80% of a competent competitive deck. Hyperion is just crazy though. You summon it by banishing any one of your agent monsters from the hand field or graveyard. And once per turn, you can banish a light fairy monster from your graveyard, target a card on the field, destroy that target. If you have Sanctuary in the Sky, you can do it twice, but no one ever played it because that card's a big brick. You can't search Hyperion, which sucks, but the thing is there are ways to get to a little bit quicker. And if you see this card, you're going to be in really good shape. We also have a Sangen paired with the three tour guide here. Tour guide is finally making its debut in this format because now we have some more materials to actually work with here in the extra deck department. But the fact you get a bunch of dark Sangen can search you like an effect veiler for the following turn. Then you have a light and a dark for a BLS. If you have it in hand, seems pretty good. We have three copies of agent of creation Venus on turn one. We can just pay 1500 special summon some shine balls and overlay them into Gachi Gachi Gentetsu. And then you actually have a 2k attack Venus because this buffs all of our monsters by 200 attack and defense. And we still have an extra shine ball that we could possibly use. We could even just maybe pay for two in that case, but that's like a pretty decent opening board. We also have one agent of miracles. Jupiter, this card is probably one of the more cuttable cards, but it's okay. Once per turn, you can banish an agent monster in your graveyard to select a face up light monster you control. It gains 800 attack, which is mildly relevant. The other part of course relies on sanctuary in the sky, but it's an 1800. It's okay. And then three copies of agent of mystery earth. This is one of the newest ones that was released. It's a tuner, which is very important. And when it's normal summon, you can add an agent monster from your deck to your hand. Now, unfortunately, Master Hyperion is not an agent, but we can add Venus, which is great for a follow-up play. And we can actually get this back later on if we banish it for like Hyperion, because then we're going to be able to go and just get this out for potential tuner plays. Then aside from the three Shine Ball, which are our mandatory engine requirement, and is the reason why some people weren't a fan of this deck, because you do have to play the bricks in the Shine Balls. Thankfully, Venus can summon from either hand or deck. So if you draw them, it's not the end of the world. But we also have two copies of Trigodia rounding out our monsters. Just a fantastic card all around. Then for the spells, Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, Triple MST, Triple Pot of Duality. What I like about Duality is that we are playing a special summon heavy deck, but we want to see Hyperion. We want to see cards like BLS, and the format isn't super explosive that you're immediately going to die if you activate this card. So buying you some time to filter through your deck, get to your bombs is pretty good. And then this deck was main decking a lone copy of Trap Dust Shoot. As you can see, the trap cards are all in the side deck, but let's go to the extra deck first. We have an Ally Justice Cataster and Decisive Armor, Ancient Sacred Wyvern, Armory Arm, Black Rose Dragon, Brianak, a Guy Knight, the Force of Earth, Magical Android, Scrap Dragon, Stardust, Trishula Dragon of the Ice Bear. All these are very easily accessible with Agent plus any of our tuners. Then for the Xyz, Gachi Gachi Gentetsu, as aforementioned. Levier is fantastic. This is how I was alluding that we're going to bring back Earth from the Banished Pile if we banish it for Master Hyperion. So we can actually use Tour Guide plus Sangen to go into Levier, bring that back, and then we have access to some more plays. Leviathan is our other rank three of choice if we need a big monster just to get over stuff. And of course, we are playing number 39 Utopia because we have a decent number of level fours. And then for the side deck, double copy of Cyber Dragon if we just need some larger monsters to deal with here. Two copies of DD Crow because obviously there is a lot of graveyard based stuff going on and having Crow is nice. Three copies of Thunder King Ryo to really slow down these decks. Just a fantastic card all around. 1900 stat line, you contribute it to negate stuff coming out of the extra deck. Just a really annoying card. And then we have all the traps. We're probably going to sight into most of these after game one. So then that way, if we know we're going first, we're going to have access to them. Double bottomless, double dimensional prison, double dust tornado, a mirror force and a torrential tribute. This is going to be a very fun episode, you guys. I can't wait to see
see how it's going to play out. Anything's possible, so let's try to take the W. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Buddy, I am stoked for this episode. I think a lot of people have been waiting for us to get to this format specifically to see what it is all about. And, you know, people are probably expecting we're going to do it justice. We're probably not. We're probably going to commit acts of travesty on camera. But you know what? It's fine because we're going to have fun while we're doing it. <laughs> well, I hope that we have fun. We are at the very least not playing some of the exceptionally boring stun decks that we have been exploring in the last couple of episodes. Uh, this time we will be summoning monsters and activating their effects. So, you know, that's it's slightly different than normal. You didn't have fun playing Malefic Cyber End Dragon oh, Buddy? No, Is that it was, what you're it was so <laughs> sick. Oh, I was so <laughs> happy. You know, you're saying that now, but then you're probably going to regret the fact that you're not playing it because now you actually have to use brain power this episode. And, you know, that's something that we're not particularly fond of on the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into it then. Let's shout out the patron. It is Yuri Trazek. Thank you so much for the support, buddy. You got the fingers up for me? Hmm. Yes. I'm going to go with odd. It is even. I had two okay. fingers up for the stars on Mystic Shine Ball. Oh, okay. Interesting. I was going for one for the place that your deck finished. <laughs> that is true. Thanks, Billy. Uh, I'm going to do my best here. All right. Good luck, buddy. Can't wait to see how this one's going to play out. This is going to be... I, I really hope this is a good one. This seems like it should be a lot of fun. Well, this is a decent start. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Reborn Tengu. I'm going to set two and back to you. That's probably as good as it gets. I will draw. You got anything to stand by? Nope. Okay. Let's go into main one. I will go ahead and run out the Agent of Mystery Earth. All right. So you want to walk through how powerful this card is? Uh, It's not bad. I get to go ahead and add an Agent Monster from my deck to my hand if you'll allow it. Unless oh, you have a response here okay well with that then we're gonna go ahead and grab everyone's favorite card the agent of venus okay and uh unfortunately buddy i don't got much else going on so i think i'm just gonna pass the turn okay i'll draw for turn stand by me Oh, that's a pretty sick pickup. I will normal summon a strange one of that's in here, a uh, Spirit Reaper. Ooh, I mean, that's a pretty good one in this case, sure. I'll take the seven, agent and will go, and you're gonna hit me for three. Who said that goat format ever had to end? Please hit the card I really want you to hit. Oh, let's go! Get him out of my hand! <laughs> uh, well, I mean... <laughs> that could be in the graveyard, in your hand, it would functionally make no difference. You know, it's fine by me. I'm not going to complain. Uh, I will draw. That's actually kind of cool. Well, I guess we go for it. I will normal summon Agent of Creation Venus. Well, we have still got priority. Would you like to do something with it? Uh, yes, I would like to pay that 500. Do you have a response? I do. I will Book of Moon your Agent of Creation. Why would you do that, buddy? That's so rude. Uh, because right. I can't well... beat Gachi Gachi Gentetsu. <laughs> <laughs> fair point, fair point. All right, so I'm going to get a Shine Ball to the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, thinking what I want to do next. Well, I'm partially insulated from Spirit Reaper, but not by a ton. I think I'm just going to pass. All right, I will draw for turn. Uh, stand by main. All good. What's the defense on Venus? It's a whopping zero. Oh, sick. Well, I've got a play. It's an interesting one for sure. Uh, I'm going to begin by okay. tributing this Reborn Tengu for a Caius the Shadow Monarch. Sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and banish your face down card and trigger the effect of the Tengu. I think I'm going to Veiler the Caius. This is fun, buddy. We actually have gameplay. <laughs> right? It's not just, oh, I'm going to slap my big idiot on the field or flip a skill train. <laughs> Indeed it isn't. Yeah, that's fine. I'll go grab my Tengu. Wish I had Maxi. Unfortunately, I do not. Well, you know, not much to do here. Uh, let's just go to combat. Let's go Tengu into the Shine Ball. Okay. Caius into the set card. Go Reaper direct. Take the three. What are we hitting, buddy? Let's find out. This one. Did not show up. Which one? Oh, that means you get a free one. Uh, the <laughs> one closest to your extra. The one closest to my extra deck. That is a Sangen. Uh, second main, I will set a card. And back to you, Buckaroo. I mean, your board's looking pretty good, unfortunately. So, main one. Let me think how I want to do this. Uh, It's not great. Well, I'll start with a Mystical Space Typhoon going after the one you just set. That is a Call of the Haunted. Mm. Okay, going to bring back Tengu? I will. And then in sure. resolution, we will summon another one. That's fine. 
All right. Uh, wish I did this first, but here's Christia. There he is. Any response? No response to Christia. Perfect. Uh, that means it's probably not long for this earth then. Um, I guess I could go to battle here. Do I have any other options? Probably not. You're through all your Tengus at this point. Well, I'm actually going to trigger the effect of Christia before I forget to bring a uh, monster back to my hand. So I will grab back... I've already gone through my shine ball, so like Venus isn't fantastic. I guess I get Earth? Sure. All right, I'll just go to battle. Let's hit a Tengu. Uh, sure. I'll take how much here? 11. And then head over to second main. I guess I'll run out the Earth. That's okay. Bring that out. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a copy of Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And I think... Probably just gonna set one and pass the turn. All right, I will draw for turn. Stand by main. I'll set that for sure. <laughs> uh, huh. Let's go to battle phase here. Sure. I go Tengu into Earth. That's fine. So I take seven. Uh, let's go Caius into Christia. Do you have a response? I do not. All right, I will enemy controller to change your Christia to defense position. I see, sure. So Christia goes to defense and then it dies. And then uh, back to the top of the deck, I believe. Oh, uh, because of its effect, yep. Mm -hmm. Then Thank we you. will get in directly with Reaper. I'll take the three. What are you gonna hit, buddy? I don't know. Uh, I didn't think I'd get this far. Uh, how about this one? It's the Jupiter. Okay, so you are at one, two, three, four, five in grave. I'm at five now, sadly. <laughs> Thank the Lord about that. Okay. Um. Hmm. Now I have in main phase two some decisions to make. I don't have that many decisions. <laughs> uh, I will just pass here. Uh, I'm gonna draw a card. Could be anything. Literally anything. Uh, literally could be anything. All right. Uh, main one here. I'm going to activate reborn. I'm going to target my Jupiter. I, I can't let you do that, yeah. Oh, that's a big one. That's a really big one. Damn, that sucks. Let's see. So I'm going to be taking 41, 44. I'm not dead. I need you to have a monster, but that's pretty likely in your deck. You're playing plants. Well, I think to at least buy me a turn, I can do this. I'll set one and pass. Uh, stand by main. That's a very funny line. Uh, is it actually good though? Time will tell. Uh, I'm gonna activate Monster Reborn targeting a Mystic Shine Ball. Sure. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Effect Veiler. Perfect. Three, four, five, six. Let's go for Brio. Mm-hmm. Brio Effect. I will pitch Dandelion. <laughs> Target your monster. And there we go. Uh, that'll do it. I Ooh. had a very sick line if you did not have warning. I will say, unfortunately, before anyone it. gives you any shit for veiling that, um, that uh, Caius, I had lethal if you didn't do that. Fair enough. Oh, man. If you did not have that warning, I was going to go off. I was ready to Black Rose plus Christia you. It was going to be sick. That Spirit Reaper did a number. I lost yeah, three cards I was off say, of that thing. Big shouts out to Spirit Reaper. It looked like crap when it was getting the Mystic Shine Ball, but then it got like... <laughs> Four other cards out of your hand. Really killer yeah. stuff. Uh, my hand was just a ton of monsters, and I just didn't really have a lot I could do each turn, at least until, like, the later stages. But maybe right. that's just how this deck is. But I get to go first. Maybe it'll make a difference, and uh, we'll see if that's the case. Good luck, buddy. Good luck to you, too. Oh, I imagine it will make a difference. This is a I think so as well. Chance. This hand looks significantly better. I'm going to start with a duality. Yep. Oh, my God. Ooh. Those are some pretty good ones. Uh, not fantastic into duality, uh, Earth at least. No, not fantastic into duality, but uh, for the next turn, buddy. Oh, just you wait. For real. <laughs> um, I think the play here is probably the tour guide. Oh wow. Okay. Do you and that's have because the Earth? I already have yeah. the Earth in hand. Okay. Well, <laughs> makes that decision a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go digging. We're gonna grab the Venus. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to shuffle up there, and then I'm going to set one and throw it to you. Stand by main. Very oh, strange start for me. Very, very strange start. I'm going to normal summon a reborn Tengu. I was going to say, like, <laughs> if you have Tengu, I feel like the decision is a lot easier. That's fine. Let me try this out. Take the seven here. Sure. Agent Stone. Uh, second main, I'll set one as well. Back to you. I'll space the back row. Ah, uh, okay. It was the Book of Moon again. Okay, sure. We'll draw. Not exactly too happy to see that, but it's 
fine, I suppose. Um, okay, now what do we do? Got a couple lines. I think I like this one the best. Uh, normal summon tour guide. No response to this. I will activate. No Valor. No Valor. Uh, let's get good old Sangan. Now you can detach the Sangan and search via its effect, right? Unfortunately, no, I cannot. I really wish I could. Actually, in that case, if that's not the ruling anymore, um, maybe I just want to get the other tour guide. Yeah, not terrible either way. For those of you who are wondering why exactly uh, we were able to do this last episode, but not this one, it was ruled three days before this tournament that it didn't yep. work like that. Uh, which threw the metagame into chaos. Um, the deck that Alex is playing was functionally unbeatable if you were allowed to do this because Sangan in uh, Agents is a real house of a card. So the trade-off here is if I get another tour guide, then if I draw Sangan, then like the other tour guide gets slightly worse. But like Sangan's still like a better card. I actually think I'm going to go for the other tour guide. Um, I, f well, I forgot that we were actually... Uh, in the new rule now. So, okay, uh, let's go for it. I'm going to overlay. I'm going to go straight for... Actually, this opens up some more plays now. Uh, back in the day, of course, you could only go Granosaurus, but now we've got Leviathan Dragon, we've got Levier, and we may also yeah. have Granosaurus, depending on your extra. It's crazy how many, like, just fantastic XCs cards we had after the starter deck. <laughs> I imagine you experienced this on progression. I certainly have in playoff, but... uh. Wow, the first wave of Xyz, like the first four weeks, is like the craziest series of monsters ever printed. Like Leviarcy's play today in the best deck. It's crazy. I have an interesting play. I'm a bit iffy on it, though. I kind of like it. So I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, so we're going to go for Leviathan. This shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, we're going to go ahead and detach for its effect. This will give it a, a 500 attack point boost here. And then I'm actually going to banish a light and a dark. Ooh. Okay. And run out BLS. Wow, that is, uh, that is, uh, pretty, that's, that's, uh, wow, that's strong. <laughs> My thinking here is that I can run you out of Tengus. I'll take 1300 here. Yes. All right, let's go grab one. Now, unfortunately, you can just put them in defense and not take any damage. However, I can at least run you out of them, so that's pretty good. So BLS will get another attack in here because I have to attack again in a row. And then Leviathan Dragon can clean up the third one. Yep. So we'll go ahead and do that. And that's all for me, buddy. Go ahead. Oh boy, not ideal. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go TGU. We are gonna grab uh, another TGU. Gonna overlay here. We'll go for our own Leviathan. We will trigger the effect and I guess we'll crash. Okay, sure. So they're both gone. Second main, let's- Avarice? Avarice. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll put Makes sense. Uh, that's the only downside of giving you three Tengus immediately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not that big of a downside even. Uh, no. Shuffle them up. Got to draw some non-monsters here. And we did not. Holy shit. Am I just dead here? It's not looking great. All right, back to you, Buckaroo. Uh, okay, I would like to be able to clean this one up, but I'm not sure if we can. I will go into main one and see if I can find lethal somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it may not be lethal, but it may be... Oh, actually, it might be lethal. Uh, I'm gonna normal summon Venus. Sure. I will activate the effect to summon a shine ball. Okay, so we'll get that. Uh, am I okay to do that two more times? Yeah, just keep going, buddy. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go through all of them. Ah, then I'm gonna overlay two of them for a... Uh, this one's gonna be an attack, excuse me. Uh, Gachi Gatsu Gentetsu. Okay. So this will buff everything by 400 per its effect. Um, so that means that I think I have lethal, but I guess we will find out. I will go to battle. <laughs> All right. Hit for nine. Sure. Nine more. Yeah. 2K. Uh, oh, and then he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll take 2,000 here. Uh, yeah, I do have the cores. Um, okay. But it's not that impressive into a board that literally wipes it. Correct. So BLS gets to attack twice here, which is pretty sick. Uh, it does prevent you from dying, to be fair. Uh, second main, I am just going to pass it to you. How are we doing this? I also need to take another thousand for summoning the shine balls before the comments uh, eviscerate me. Well, it's not pretty. Yeah, do I know anything about your anything? Uh, no. Crap. Which doesn't help you. <laughs> I will normal the Free dragon. I will reborn tour guide. That is fine. Uh, is there a black rose in my future? Uh, yes, I'd like to make sure that we don't die to the Gachi Gachi Gentetsu, though. Sure. So I take a hundred here, and then I'm going to take, goes down to seven, so I take three. I lose my materials, and, and then make black rose and nuke the board. Yep. 
They're all gone. Okay, how are we doing on fairies and grave? Four? Oh boy, back to you. <laughs> Could be anything, right? Could be anything. Uh, go to main one, summon Christia. Ooh, yep. Uh, well, normal earth. And that'll do it. And it will. Game three, all right, this has been good. Why did they ban DLS? I don't understand. I, you know, I, I was asking the same question. <laughs> What's the, uh, <laughs> the card's so crazy? What's the upside to that? Uh, oh god, uh, this is an interesting one. Best of luck for game three. Uh, I will normal summon Tangu for the third game in a row, and you are good to go. You know, it did well one game, but you know, I, unless I have the exact hand to beat it, I don't think it's going to be as good the second game. All uh, right, anything standby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get the dust shoot going. I mean, I don't think this changes my decision at all. So yeah, sure. Here, take a look. Sangan, Jupiter. Duality is nice here because it sort of plays around the dust shoot. Yeah, let's go for um, let's go for Earth here. I think that's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes sense. So, Earth here, put it on top, and it is gone. All right, good to proceed to main one. Yep. Cool. Uh, let's fire the duality. Sure. You know, I really would have liked to see Earth again. Um, well, you know my whole hand, so this isn't like anything exciting. Baylor's nice, because it possibly stops a push. Uh, I've already got MST for your back row. You could have another one. Could honestly just take another duality. It's not like terrible. I have nothing in my hand that's like really special summoning this turn. You know what? Yeah, I guess I'll just take another duality. Sounds good. It's not ideal. Uh, let's go right, ahead so... and... One, are you going to put these back on top? Oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry. You know, these don't get banished permanently as much as I'd probably like them to be at this point. Uh, yeah, so they're gone. And uh, then at resolution, let's go ahead and mind crush. Had the mind crush, too. What are you going to call? <sighs> Man, that duality is really fucking me up. I'm going to go for a Sangan here. <laughs> okay. I think that's fine. Sangan gone. You know the rest of my hand. It's MST, duality, Jupiter, and bottomless. Yep. So I guess I'll run you out of one Tangu since I can. Let's just go for it. I'll take the 100 here and... Uh... Uh, grab myself a tango. Sounds good to me, buddy. Uh, second main, I'm going to set two cars that you know what they are and pass the turn. Okay, draw for turn. Stand by me. Yep. Let us activate Foolish Burial. I'm going to send a glow up bulb to the graveyard. That's scary. Yep. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Dandelion. That's even more scary. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, activate glow up bulb. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Well, well there goes that. With my hand, that card's not doing anything. <laughs> and we will go one, two, three, four, f uh, five, six, five. seven, eight for mm -hmm. Stardust Dragon. Sucks. Jupiter is actually a pretty good out to Stardust here, but unfortunately, uh, it's not going to be long for this Earth at this rate. Um, I imagine you're going to trigger Tengu here as well, so you can grab that. I will. Is there any advantage here while to I think out loud? the inevitable. You've got two tokens. You've already normaled. I have. Only Stardust can get over it. Uh, I guess I'm going to force it. Uh, I will activate the effect. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, unfortunately, sir, I have the biggest punish in the seven seas. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's fine. Had to hit the uh, monster off of the glow up bulb uh, to not have to shuffle the Stardust back in. But Damn. did get it. <laughs> All right, uh, back to you. Okay, so end phase, your Stardust comes back. I'm gonna, before that happens, I'm gonna MST your yeah, uh, We can trade here. Set. No big deal. Yep. All right, go ahead. Okay, come on. Let's see it. Damn it, that's not what we wanted to see. Okay, main one, I do have duality. Yep, go for it. Ooh, okay. Fuck, not great. I just needed, oh, I needed a lot. Yeah, I was gonna honest. say. Uh, that, uh, yeah. that tour guide is looking pretty tasty, but uh, not the same turn you duality. No, it is not. Uh, Heavy's not doing anything. Reborn's cool, but, you know... Kind of same problem here. Not the same turn I duality, it's not. And even so, like, what am I going to bring back? Like, the Jupiter? Like, I guess. This is tough. Uh, You've got two tokens. Probably got something else to follow up next turn. We're not taking Heavy. I mean, I know that for sure. Are you, are you sure? I mean, what if you what if you did? What if, I mean, you could just have two back row and next turn and then, you know, like the best case scenario with Reborn at this pay, juncture is like not great. So I actually think I have to go for tour guide. 
Uh, and then battle, I guess. God, that avarice is just crushing. I the good can news kill is Tengu. The avarice is now limited. Thankfully, you know, when you draw it every game, yeah, it doesn't you know, matter. Well, is it really limited at all? I can kill a token and at least get you one thing down. It's like killing Tengu just seems so worthless. The only trade off is if you have more plays with synchroing like you don't get more tengus um the fluffs are also like sort of a problem too i guess i can't kill them both so you're gonna have one at least <laughs> like none of this matters like none of it matters at all you could get like a tuner uh i'll just hit a token second main i'll set one go at least you can't like modulate as easily true can you uh get that monster reborn back uh yeah sorry all right uh i'm just not me. on it with my dualities today yeah that's fine I'll normal Thunder King Ryo. Gross, sure. Combat. Let's go Ryo into the Jupiter. So I take 100 here. Uh, we'll go Stardust Direct. 25. And Tango Direct. 17. Go ahead. We're going to need something. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, main one. Yep. Uh, show me the Valor. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're Thunder King anyway, so it's not like it mattered. Uh, this was fun. Uh, this was a good game. Uh, this was anyone's game, yeah, truly. Could, uh, could, I'm gonna still go either way. I'm gonna gores out my shine ball Excellent. and just concede here because <laughs> that and the MST that Excellent. I drew is just not happening. Fantastic news! Wow. Well. Oh my God. All right. Well, that's, just like uh, that's the uh, first and second place match, uh, Plants and Billy Break take it once again. Good games, buddy. <laughs> you know, I know this is called Tangu Plant, and obviously the plants mattered a fair amount. Uh, but I think the Tangu is the more important part of this one. Oh my yeah. god. What do you do if they normal summon Tangu turn one? It just feels like the end of the game. You hope you have tour guide BLS. That's what you do. <laughs> I guess. My god. What a catastrophic yeah. set. And Avarice yeah. as well. Uh, but at the end of the day... You know, uh, this Tango plant deck by this point in its history looked like an old school goat deck in that it was oh, playing 25 one ofs. Uh, like anything even remotely playable in this deck outside of Tango exactly was limited. Uh, and because of that, no one was really expecting it going into YCS Toronto. Um, Joe actually talks about his uh, pretty miraculous run at that tournament. He played against, I think, an agent player round one. Uh, Normal summoned, like, a lone fire, and they went, plants? And, you know, what a hilarious thing to hear. <laughs> well, you're still playing plants? By the end of 16 rounds, it was clear that, in fact, many people were still playing plants. Uh, yeah, I believe, wasn't the top cut, like, 20 of the 32 was plants or something like that? I, was, I don't recall for sure. It was quite sure, ridiculous. But, but uh, these yeah, it was, two decks, it was over half. Yeah, these yeah. two decks were far and away the best thing you could be doing this format. Absolutely. And you didn't even see in my hand in game two, I even had Hyperion oh, as well. So God. I had Hyperion as a follow-up as well with the Christia. So even if like I couldn't summon Christia, like Hyperion would have done the job there as well. Uh, this deck was sick. I mean, the biggest issue is that a, the shine balls are just the worst thing to draw on the planet. Right. But B, the other problem is it just plays a lot of monsters and like your hand gets gummed up with just things that you really can't just synergize well together you don't really have a wall of ways to special some things because this deck's playing like three tour guide three miss uh three earth rather three venus and it, you kind of find yourself in the situation where you can't empty your hand fast enough and the main deck of this deck was actually on 30 monsters and 10 spell or uh, nine spells and one trap oh it was uh gosh. maining the lone copy of trap dust shoot in the main and so to be fair like you're not really dying that quickly in this format but at the same time when you're, are, when you're not able to like just play multiple cards a turn. That was essentially what happened in my game one. My hand was like six monsters. And so I really just was itching for anything else to do at that point. And when your hand is like the other half of the deck that's good, my hand in game one was all monsters that were like the low end. I didn't have any of the bombs, like the yeah. Hyperions, the Chaos Sork, the BLS. The, I had the Christia, but that was it. But yeah, if you, you have know. maybe like a tour guide or a Venus plus a... a plus one of those bombs, that then you're going to actually have some things going on. But if you get one half of the deck or, you know, or the other half of the deck and it's all bombs and no way to actually get them going, you start to see like some consistency issues with the deck. But 
What I do like is this is one of like the first examples of one of the structure decks where you could just buy three of it and have like 85% of a constructed playable deck, you know, except for like tour guide essentially and like the extra deck, right? And that's what some people did. Like this was a deck that was represented very heavily at the lower level because it was very affordable, very cheap and very effective at the same time. And I think we're about to see a lot of that again in our next episode uh, when a structure deck just kind of comes to the forefront of uh, playable strategies, um, maybe to uh, less successful full degree than agents was but um for a period of time in 2011 this was konami's mo they were like invest in the tour guides invest in you know the extra deck monsters we got you covered on main deck cards we'll just print the good ones in the uh, structures and um it was a nice time to be playing to be sure um this uh this marks the end by the way, of uh, my hiatus from Yu-Gi-Oh. Hooray! You know, uh, quit, <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. <laughs> quit for uh, Dark Arm Dragon and then returned in 2011 for the uh, Dark World Structure deck out for about two years while I tried to uh, convince, you know, uh, high schoolers to, uh, you know, uh, kiss me or something. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I could not have picked a more interesting time to come back. Uh, while Reborn Tengu was an extremely powerful card, and, you know, you could argue so meta-warpingly strong that uh, it choked the life out of uh, some of these uh, lower-tier decks, uh, you have to admit, we had a bunch of back-and-forth in these games. You know, there was yeah. play to them. And it's not surprising to see why uh, this is a format that is uh, kind of beloved when it comes to uh, legacy ones that people play to this day. Absolutely. A lot of just intricate decision-making as well. There were several times, although the audience won't see it, you and I took several minutes just to deliberate over all the different lines we could possibly take. Oh, and yeah. that's what I really love about a format. I feel like we haven't really seen that since we got out of Edison, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. And I that's you know, that's the type of Yu-Gi-Oh! I enjoy the most. And so next time around, uh, the format sort of evolves into both of these decks, uh, the aforementioned Dark World deck, as you mentioned, and uh, I'll be playing something a little bit different just to uh, mix things up a bit, but the fans will have to wait and see what that is. Different is one word for it. Uh, criminal <laughs> is another, and, uh, you know, I, you, I invite you all to speculate as to what that could be. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Looks like I'm back in the Shirt of Shame, but it was nice to be out of it for once, but next time I'm definitely going to deserve to be in it for what I'm playing, but you'll have to stay tuned for next time. Let's shout the patrons. Shout out to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, Chaotic People, Tim Zero X3, Ian Musaka, Irofang, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hobbit, Secret Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asano 105, Sylvia Wilds, Colt T, Draconic, Rockside, Dollar Up, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Elson, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Iron Blades, and Pure Ace Jesse, with Turner Guys and Brother Paul, Chris Hood, MBT Play, Medulce, at Nehru Celeste, David Liu, Chat God, Skyrose, Dylan Hunter, John Two Base, Brody East, with Day Sir, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Ashlyn Jensen, Give Me Speed Word or Give Me Death, guys, please read your cards. TC Gaming, thanks for the sleeves, Dad, Matthew. Brady, Ash Blossom Toast, Sniffer, Max, Tom Russell, Band Snatch Steel for Progression 2021, Chipotle Rice, Wayan, I think of MBT in the shower, and Super Dark Edge. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.